Look how adorable, guys. This is what we're making today. This adorable pot holder. Look how cute these are. It's by Annie's Crafts. So let me show you how to make one. What you're going to need is two pieces of fabric for your front and your back. So you need a front and a back. And I used fusible fleece only because I'm going to put mine as decoration. I'm not using them as pot holders. If you're going to use them as pot holders, you need to use that um, insole bride, I think is how you say it. So it protects your hands. You don't get burnt up. So you need a front and a back for them. And I went ahead and fused my uh, fusible fleece to that. You're going to need four wing pieces and these need to be mirrored to see how they're mirrored you need two for one wing and two for the other wing and we're going to clip them together and as you can see this one is the round edge and this one's kind of straight this is the edge you're going to sew i'm going to clip them together and i have my other wing already I have my other wing already ready and it's mirrored as well. So we're gonna sew them too. You're gonna need some ribbon and that's gonna be his proof on the top of his head like his comb. I'm gonna use buttons for his eyes and I'm gonna use these green buttons. I think it'll be really pretty with this fabric, which I am using Cozy Up by Moda. That's the fabric line I'm using. And I'm just using a uh, fusible fleece. All right, so you're gonna take your pattern, take your pattern piece, lay it down, cut out around it. I store my patterns in these bags. So take your pattern pieces, lay them down, cut around them. And um, you'll get your, pattern, your, your pieces like this, okay? So you need three of these for his proof like um, his cone on the top. That's the extra pieces there. And I don't need these right now. So what I've done on the pattern, it has some markings. And this is going to be his neck. I don't know if you can see it. I've done Drew on it with the fric fric friction pin or however you say it, friction pin. And that's going to be his neck. I don't know if you can see this line that's right here. There's markings on the pattern that show you how to do that. And then it tells you to take his little big piece so far down and put it here in the middle. Them are, uh, instructions are on the pattern. I can't tell you that's not my pattern to tell you. But that's how it's going to look. So we're going to go to the machine, the regular sewing machine right now. And we're going to top stitch his beak on. You can use a, a blanket stitch or a pretty stitch from your sewing machine. I have a straight stitch machine, so I'm just going to straight stitch that. And then I'm going to sew his neck line. I'm also going to take my wing pieces and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch down the two sides that I've clipped. I think I will take these for the next step. So let's head to the sewing machine. <clears throat> All right, guys, here we are at the sewing machine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and set my machine on kind of a medium stitch length. Uh, they're all different for different machines, but mine I'm going to put on three and a half. And I'm going to top stitch around the nose or beak or mouth, beak. So that's what I'm going to do. Take your time, go very slow. I'm not going to back stitch in the beginning because I'm just going to go over the stitch when I get to the end. So very slowly, even if you have to hand crank some, all the way around these tight little corners. Okay, one more side. And I'm going to turn 
right where my thread started and do a little like back stitch forward backwards okay So mine is not perfect by no means, but no chicken is. So that's what my big looks like. Now I'm gonna turn it to an even bigger stitch length and for my machine, I'm gonna to go to a five and I'm gonna sew its neckline. So I'm gonna start here and I am gonna back stitch here because um, I don't want it to come loose as I handle it the rest of the way. And I'll make this a smooth curve all the way around. I'm back stitch at the end. Okay, and there's his neck. I don't know if you can see. There we go. Now you can see. All right. So now I'm going to go back to my two and a half inch stitch length. I'm going to sew these at a quarter of an inch. Come right off the tip, all the way down and around. And back stitching at the beginning and the end, and then I'm just gonna chain piece these together. My iron is back talking over there. I don't know if you can hear it or not. There we go. So now we're going to take the wing pieces and turn them right side out. And you really want to, yes, I lick my fingers. You really want to roll this seam in your hand and make it where it is like right on the outside. Making sure everything's pulled out good. There we go. And we'll do the other one. Just take it and roll it in your fingers, making sure everything's pulled out good. You don't have to use as many clips as I do. I just don't want it to shift. Now I'm going to go back to a five and I'm going to top stitch just this one side. When I top stitch this, I'm going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch. Oh, these are so cute. If you do like festivals or anything like that where you go off and sell, these things are sell, sell so quickly when I make them and someone walks in, they buy it. They see it automatically and they buy them. I cannot keep these made. Now I'm going to do this one. go there's my top stitching on that eighth of an inch all the way down okay so now we're gonna take our wing pieces and where this bottom curve part is you want to put it in the bottom like his bottom side here so just nest it in there line everything up good and straight and clip it on And then take this one, and you have your fold side, the part you top stitched, right here. So you're clipping the raw edges together. I dropped a wing. My bad, guys. All right. Wouldn't be no threads and lengths in this place. Okay. So then again, I'm going to take this part with the curve here and nest it up right into his bottom, bottom curve. And line it up good and straight and clip it on. So that's what it looks like so far. Now I'm going to base this on. This is a very important 
step. A lot of people will skip basting. I think it's very necessary when you got this wing because you're going to put them all together and flip it and turn it. So you've got one, two, three layers of fabric and three layers of batting here. And then when you put this on top, you're going to have four and four. So that's, um, everything can shift. So you want to baste this in and I'm just going to use it on a five and I am going to base at an eighth of an inch. Okay. Got my Y back stitch there, I think have it. And then I'm going to do this other one. Because I do have a trash can right here beside me, so I'm not throwing my threads in the floor. There we go. Oh, I missed that one. I missed the top part of that one. See, I missed the top part. So let me go back and get that. And uh, scoot it over a little bit. There we go. Did to get you that time? I did. So now they're on, you know, just basted on. This sucker is going to be so cute. Okay. So now we're going to go to our ribbons. And in the, the pattern, it tells you what sizes to cut these. They are two different sizes. Two of them are cut one size and the other one is cut a different size. The one that's cut longest, you want to kind of just take it like this and meet the edges. Like I'm just straightening my arms out and it makes a loop at the top like this. And I'm going to put that right in the middle on the top. Right in the middle of his forehead. Kind of just creasing it a little bit to get me a little mark there. I'm going to... Line everything up, get them straight. Okay, so I've got a little loop and I'm gonna put the loop down and baste it on. You can go ahead and do all three of them if you feel comfortable doing that. I found that as I'm doing them, it's easier to place one at a time because the other ones will shift and move when you move your clips. So it's easier for me just to have my fingers on the piece that I'm that I'm working on now. So now I'm gonna base this one on. Just a couple of little stitches to, to get it attached. See? So then when you flip it up, it's gonna look like this. So this is gonna be the center of his forehead. And I'm gonna take another one and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hold each side just like this. And I'm just bringing my thumbs together. And overlapping them putting one on top of the other making them straight and then I'm gonna put this to the side of it kind of diagonally and baste it on I'm just gonna do another little couple stitches there okay oops and I missed him okay let's do it again so I've got the two ends and I'm just bringing them together, overlapping them, oops, I missed it, overlapping them just like this. I'm going to bring it down here and I'm going to put this one to the left, but this, it doesn't matter whichever one you're comfortable doing next. So I'm going to put it here. You do want to remember when you place this that you have a quarter of an inch seam allowance around the whole thing, so you don't want to catch it like hang it off to the side of it as it'll be caught in the seam when you sew it all together. So there's my second one. See, so as you're coming around here with a quarter of an inch, you don't want this to be like way out here to be caught in that. You want them to be kind of where they stand up and be nice and pretty. Okay, so I'm going to take my next one. I'm going to do the same thing. Hold them out like this. Bring my thumbs together. Make a loop overlap my loop and I'm going to put it down on the opposite side that I just put the last one. Again at a little diagonal. 
and I'll show you before I before I sew it on there. See, so if you sew here, you may catch that. See, because it's going to be within the quarter of an inch here. So I'm going to adjust it this part in a little bit more. So I'm just going to line it up a little better than that. Scooch it in some. there's someone here please call ah guys i'm back that was my mail lady she was delivering some fabric i'm really excited so that's how i'm gonna stir this one on all righty There we go. So we are now ready to take our back. Back piece has no markings on it at all. We're gonna put it right side down on top of it and line everything up. Whew, walk to the mailbox and back, I'm out of breath. I'm just lining up all my uh, landmarks, such as the bumps in the bottom and the crown at the top. And then I'm going to mark on either side of the bottom of the wing because we're going to leave this part open to turn it. And then I'm going to come up the side a little and up this side a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start right here at the, right where the wing, maybe a little bit in from the wing, the, um, the wing at the bottom. And I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way around it and I'm going to stop right here leaving a pretty good size opening for us to turn it in. I'm going to do this on two and a half and I'm going to do it at one quarter inch. Take your time. You want these corners to be, not corners, but these curves to be good and smooth around. You don't want like the head of the chicken to be a little wonky. So let's make them smooth. I'm just going to remove this pin and check under here and make sure all of my little crown pieces, my foof on the top, is laying in and correct because I felt them and I felt like one was up here. So I'm just going to make sure they're laying straight. Quarter of an inch in. Take your time here. You have a little bit of a hump here because you're sewing through four pieces of fabric and four pieces of batting. So when you're coming up on the wings and off of the wings, take your time. Kind of slow down a little bit. And then continue on. I have a string there for some reason. Around quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to come to where I'm coming off of the wing. And then I'm going to come off of it and then I'm going to back stitch. All my base and stitches all right so this is what we have like a pocket and at the bottom it's open this is what we're gonna turn it through so let's go over yonder and we'll finish this little baby up no no let's don't let's stay here because I'm on a top stitch here so I'm gonna reach all the way in so I just stuck my thumb into the thing I'm going to come on, um, into the thing, into the hole, and I'm going to come up to where the crown pieces are, and I'm going to flip it. So the crown pieces are the first to come out, and then I'm just going to take my hand and very easily, so we're not popping any of the stitches, take these um, and flip them out. So what you want to do, just like we did the wing piece, you want to roll them in your fingers, make sure everything's pulled out good. Roll it in your fingers and put a clip on it. And you want to do that all the way around. Making sure your seam is like right on the outside of your chicken. I got a place here, I got to pull it out a little bit more. There we go. Top knots are out good. 
the second wing. Let me stick my finger back in there. All the way around. I'm going to roll this seam in my finger some. Just like this. Okay. I dropped a clip on it on the floor. Here we go. So I'm going to take where the bottom is and I'm going to turn that under our quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to turn this side in to meet it, quarter of an inch. Tucking in all your little stray frays and things like that. And then put both of these in the clip. You want them to be kind of straight. I'm just using this to poke this little end in here. I didn't grab enough of clips, so there we go. I think I'll take one of these off of this and put over here. So you want your wing to be, I mean your bottom to be kind of straight. So that's where I'm going to leave mine at. He's going to be so cute. So now I'm going to top stitch. So I'm going to go all the way back to a five, which is my machine goes to a nine, so my the five is probably halfway between all that it'll do and not. And I've also found it's less noticeable starting and stopping your your top stitching if you start and stop like right in a crease and then do a, like a tiny little back stitch right there. I think it's less noticeable. So I'm going to start here where our opening is, and I'm going to sew eighth of an inch. I'm going to take that one off. Tuck that in a little bit more. eighth of an inch okay if you're not comfortable with an eighth of an inch you can do a quarter of an inch uh, and that'll give you some practice in top stitching okay so i'm just making sure everything's gonna lay flat for me and i'm gonna sew and i'm gonna take a uh, just one back stitch and i'm gonna catch both of them layers and again, where I, my wing starts and stops at, you want to be very careful in um, coming up on it and going off of it. So I'm going to pick my foot up, take a couple of stitches, and make sure everything is still flat. Come around that corner. Curve. It's not a corner. Fine clips. And then I'm going to go all the way around. And an eighth of an inch. Hmm. I'm kind of got a little wonky on me, but we're going to leave it. So I'm coming back up on this next wing. I'm going to put my needle down, pick my foot up, make sure the whole foot is on top of the wing instead of like going under the wing so it don't get caught. And then I'm going to continue very slowly. Eighth of an inch all the way around. I'm coming back up here, so I'm going to take and clip. I'll start and stop tails. Eighth of an inch all the way around. Well, if you do quarter of an inch. And I'm going to back stitch right there. Luckily, I'm done because I just broke my top thread. So, there's my top stitching. Eighth of an inch all the way around. You can see here where I got a little bit crazy with it. All right, so I'm going to go back over there and put his eyes on. All right, guys, here we are. Here's my fabric package. We might open that in a minute and look at it and see what we got. But here is my chicken. So adorable, adorable. Okay, so I'm going to take my glue. I know this is taboo, but I'm going to glue my buttons on instead of sew them on. So I'm going to lay them here. I don't know if I want them close together or apart if you want <clears throat> like crazy chicken eyes or 
I think I'm gonna do mine right there. So I'm gonna put a dab of glue and I'm using Fabri-Tac. I love this stuff, works really good. A little bit of this goes a long way. And I'm gonna put him right here. You wanna take notice of the holes if you want them to be the same way, if you don't want them to be. That's up to you. I think they look better if they're all the same way. Crazy chicken eyes are on. I don't think they're straight. Let's see. This one needs to come up and over a little bit more. Yeah, there they go. So this is our chicken, guys. Two minutes. These will be dry. If you want to hand sew these on, I suggest going through all layers just to kind of hold them together. But that's it. That's our chicken. Oh, so cute. He's adorable. Adorable, adorable. Again, this is the fabric line that I used. Cozy Up by Moda. If you like these colors, this is what I used. My pretty sunflower one. This one that was so cute at the beginning. I got these fabrics from Walmart. It was a fat quarter bundle at Walmart. I think they're so cute. And I use black eyes on him. So cute. So that's it, guys. This uh, design is from Annie's Crafts. I will put a link in the description below. If, oh, if you'd like uh, to purchase it, I'll put it in the link below. I'm just going to steam everything really good. I'm not hitting my buttons. And that kind of finishes off and makes it really, really pretty and flat. All right, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you guys in the next one. I'm back. I know I said I would open this fabric and see what we got. I don't know if y'all would be interested in it or not, but let's open it and see what was in here. I make clothes, so I made the shirt that I'm wearing. So this, I think, is what this is in because it says it's from Knit Pop. So that's what this is. This is knit fabrics that I'm going to use to make me some shirts and dresses out of. If you would be interested in watching me do that, I will. Just let me know in the comments below. Ugh. Got to be very careful with this because this is packed tight and I don't want to cut none of my pretty fabrics. Get there in a minute. There we go. Maybe you can get them out. All right. So I have this oh, pretty brown. Look at that. And I purchase three yards at a time when I order so that I have enough if I want to do a top or a dress. So there's this one. I don't know. Let's see if there's an order in here for me to tell you what. What colors or names they are. Don't, not feeling one. But this I got from Knit Pop. And today is uh, the end of February. I want to say like the 27th or whatever. So right now they're having a pretty good sale. And then I got this pretty piece. I thought it was really pretty. Oh, and by the way, this is Double Brush Poly. All of these. Oh, I think I got one French Terry. But this is Double Brush Poly. So it has a really good stretch. Really, really, really good stretch both ways. It's four-way stretch. And it um, 
drapes really, 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 really nice. I love the way it just falls and drapes. So like if you're doing flutter sleeves or something like that, it just, it's really, really pretty. And it is double brushed poly. I got this color. I'm loving this. I uh, can't keep white clean, but I love the way white looks. So I always, I always buy white when I see it on sale. That'll be a pretty little spring something. I don't know what I'm going to make with it, but I've got, ooh, I love this pink. Okay, so this one also is a double brush poly. Love the pink flowers on that. That blue is beautiful. It's like a navy, but not quite as dark. Maybe more like a, I don't know, but it's very, very pretty. Very pretty. This might be like a Sunday dress or something. I might, might make me something like that. Okay, this one, you can tell by the different textures, is a French terry. And it is very pretty. And it has a, almost like a weave under the inside of it. I don't know if you can tell that. It still drapes very pretty. In fact, the shirt that I'm wearing here is a French terry, so it does drape and, and lay very nice. Um, it still has four-way stretch, pretty good four-way stretch. French terry, though, I will tell you, does not have as much stretch as the double brush poly. So if you're looking for leggings or something like that or tight fitting and you, you're well endowed, you probably want to stick with the double brush poly. So that it stretches around you and it's more form fitting. I like more loose things, so it doesn't bother me with the French terry. Even with the French terry like this, it still has room for the cuffs. Like it still stretches pretty good when you make the cuffs and stuff. So that I can't believe they didn't put a little order form in there or whatever. But that's what I got today, guys. I'll see you in the next one.